Hello guys and girls, how's it going? Screezilla here and I hope you're all well. And today we are looking at the history of and some details on one of the French reserve tanks, the FCM-36, or the Forges and Chantiers de la Méditerranean. It was an old shipbuilding company based out of Toulon, which had laid the keel for dozens of dreadnoughts, cruisers and destroyers for the Mediterranean fleet. When Hotchkiss first pr proposed in 1935 to mass produce a simple and cheap infantry tank, the army army turned to other contractors to complete to compete with each other for this uh, for, for this task. Uh, FCM, who had just finished working on the FCM 2C or the Shah 2C um, in 1921, the company was involved deeply with the uh, B1 project as well. Um, FCM took the challenge and started to produce their infantry tank. They got the design for the FCM, uh, the name given by the army designation, um, formed by the uh, name of the builder and the year of acceptance into service. At first, the rough angles and sloped sides of the FCM 36 looked quite advanced for the time. Indeed, the hull was designed and tested to deflect low-velocity shells and resist against high-velocity ones as well. Uh, the zigzagging side skirts had 30 to 45 degrees of angling, which were equivalent to around 44 to 55 millimetres of, of effective armour thickness. However, they had a downside as well, as the design of the upper track side skirts failed to evacuate mud correctly in trials, Despite being pierced by five mud shoots, instead of working on this defect, several other track models were called up and tested. The hull was still narrow but roomy for a two-man crew, with a good compartmenta compartmentation as well. Um, having the engine and transmission placed at the rear, the suspension consisted of eight road wheels per side, sprung by eight vertical coiled springs. A Bellet V4 diesel engine was placed into the vehicle, which gave it rather limited top speed, but did give it a good range of around 140 miles for 217 litres of fuel. The tank started testing in March of 1934, when a wooden mock-up was presented to the army, followed by a prototype in April of 1935. Um, but the hull made good impressions, although being slightly over the top weight specifications set down to the set down by the military. The vehicle encountered a fair few mechanical problems during its testing, uh, and also had to be slightly up armoured due to a new regulation, meaning uh, the use of 10 mm applique armour um, on the front. The prototype also caught the eye of the commission de infanterie uh, for an infantry tank. One of the big things on this vehicle though was the cost of it. Uh, this vehicle cost, at the time they were talking about it, 450,000 francs. However, by the time of actually making it, it was almost 900,000 francs. Almost, I think it was almost double that of the Renault and the Hotchkiss. Um, However, with the Rhineland crisis, the government were compelled to actually get a tank underway. So they ordered a batch of 100 to be delivered as soon as possible. Um, FCM were not prepared for this until December of 1936 to start setting up the manufacturing line. Production was further delayed by testing of a new prototype with a more powerful engine and better tracks, but it did fall short of expectations, so again, it didn't end up in service. The first FCM 36s were indeed delivered on May the 2nd of 1938 and others followed until March of 1939. There was a second batch of 100 ordered um, followed by a third batch for 1939-40 but due to the price the government did kind of look away at it. Uh, also because of the work on the B1, uh, they weren't too. They, they needed to get that underway instead. 
There were plans to drop the heavy Apex APXR turret, which is the turret you see on here. Now it almost looks like a pyramid. We'll just quickly switch to the uh, free camera. As you can see, it's a very odd looking turret. It's not a very pretty looking turret, but it does give room for the commander in there to have a bit of leg room to stand up. It also gives it e makes it a slightly easier turret to load. Uh, one of the issues with the single man turrets was sometimes the commander actually had to open up the rear doors of the turret, as you see on the back here, to actually load the gun. With this turret, though, it was a little bit easier to load, so he could stay in there at all times. However, it was a very heavy turret. So, they were trying to get the same turret as the Renault 35 and Hotchkiss 35 to replace it, which was a lighter, sturdier turret, and it was was easier to use. Um, although it still had some structural problems when f firing its uh, its main gun, it, it did go into the service. One of the other big issues of this tank is it was actually designed to carry the slightly heavier gun, the... I think now actually I'll just check my notes. Uh, do, 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 do. the SA-38, not the SA-18. Uh, however, due to weight issues and also size issues, the SA-38 did not get implemented into the gun, in, into the tank, sorry. The s later batches would have actually had this weapon. So it carried the SA-18. Only carrying 12 high explosive shells as well caused this tank masses of problems when they first started encountering the Germans because they didn't have the high explosive mass to attack troops and infantry. The FCM did see quite a bit of combat, most notably um, on May of 19... sorry, May the 13th of 1940, news came that the Germans had secured a bridgehead on the western bank of the Monsieur River near Sedan. Um, and the 7th BCC was ordered to counter-attack with support of an infantry rev regiment. On the following morning, they clashed with light advanced elements of uh, the German Army Corps, uh, directed by Heinz Gurnen. They managed to destroy these light vehicles um, without too much problem, but then the main tank force advanced, and this was made up of Panzer Freeze. However, they were equipped with the 37mm gun, which did not have the penetration needed to go through this French tank's armour. The other problem though was because the Panzer III had around um, 30 millimetres of armour, frontal armour, the S-18 was also inadequate to penetrate it. So it ended up with the tanks driving to near point-blank ranges of each other, shooting each other, However, the German tactics did pay off in the end, and they managed to beat the French assault. As France fell, the German did take on some of these tanks. Um, they were renamed to get my name notes. the Panzerkampfwagen 737 FCM F. However, this also did form the basis for the Marder 1 tank destroyer, along with a few other vehicles. Uh, the Marda 1 was uh, a German tank destroyer with a 75mm Pac-40 cannon on top. All in all, this vehicle is pretty terrible. Um, it lacks penetration, the gun is very poor, the tank is very slow, very sluggish. Being a two-man crew, you will die if you get penetrated generally every time and you don't have the gun to penetrate other people from the side this thing is absolutely horrendously weak as you see here we get taken out with ease from the front however it is relatively strong let's just head back to the hangar now and we will talk about it in the hangar view 
So as you can see from the front, the armor's not too bad. It does have relatively strong armor and it has got a very good slope. Um, there are sections of this tank that have over 100 millimeters of effective armor. Generally, it's around about the 40 to 50 millimeter mark, which will stop most German rounds. The turret is relatively strong as well, with 40 millimeters of protection. The mantlet is the weakest point, however, and that's generally where you will get penetrated through. However, the gun breach does tend to save you from that aspect. Um, the general spot for weakness, though, is this machine gun port here. Um, that's where you will get penetrated and usually that's where you'll get taken out. As you see, the commander here is very close proximity to this. The driver is generally pretty safe. Um, it is very rare that you lose the driver on this thing. You do lose the commander very often. The side armor is atrocious and you will get penetrated from the side by anything. Um, back has the same issue. It has got a bit of sloping, so sometimes if you do angle you do get quite a few bounces, um, but then you have this section here as a trap shop and you do get taken out a lot in that regard as well. The biggest problem for this gun though is the SA-18 37mm gun, which just doesn't have the penetration. The MLE 1937 APCR round has got very poor penetration at 36 millimeters at 10 meters. Post penetration it lacks as well. There is the MLE 1892 which is a high explosive shot, uh, armor piercing high explosive shell, but it has barely any penetration and you won't get through, you, you won't be able to penetrate most tanks with it, so it is highly ineffective. All in all this vehicle is an interesting vehicle to look at. It, you can see where the interesting designs come from, and the front armour itself is quite good, but overall it is very terrible. I've been trying to get gameplay footage of it all day, and I've been failing miserably, so I ended up having to just go against bots. One of the interesting aspects of this tank, though, is the fact that we may get the Marder 1 coming in with it. Um, of course, the Marder 1 was also based off of the, uh, I think it's Hotchkiss as well, there was some based off the Hotchkiss chassis as well as the uh, Lorraine, the uh, 37L Lorraine tractor um, chassis as well, so there, there's a few different versions that it could be based off of, but it would be good to see the Marder variant in the game. It's an interesting vehicle, um, there was also a uh, slightly different version with a, I think it was the Pack 40 installed in it, which was the Panzerkampfwagen 737 FCM, um, which was serving in Normandy up until the end of the war, pretty much. Um, but I can't really remember all that much on it. But it, again, it's an interesting looking vehicle. Um, oh yeah, no, the Pack 40. Sorry, yeah, the 75 mm Pack 40. Um, that was a FCM variant which wasn't classified as a Marder, it was a... It was sort of a half and half really, uh, but it's an interesting looking vehicle nonetheless, so again it would be nice if we got something like that in the game. Overall though, I wouldn't waste your time with this. If you are grinding the French, avoid it like the plague, use the Hotchkiss, uh, you're going to have a much better time in that vehicle. Okay guys, I hope you found this video somewhat interesting for the history aspects. Uh, give it a like and a comment if you did enjoy it. Um, let me know below what you thought, and I will see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. This is Screezler out. Bye-bye.